Working with text data on Microsoft Access can be tricky sometimes, but thankfully there's some tools that you can use to help you manage your text data like a pro. I'm going to show you the five functions I use the most when working with text data, plus a bonus custom function I made in VBA that I use all the time. Of course, there's more functions that I'm going to discuss in this video with text data, but I'm going to start with my top five or six. All right, without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. All right, I'm going to start off by using the concatenate function. And what that's going to do is it's going to combine two fields or two strings. So let's go to query design. Employees is the name of my table. So you can see right here, I have first name, I have last name, and we're going to combine these. All right, so I'm going to create a new variable called full name. I'm going to paste this in here. And as long as this part's in brackets, it doesn't have to be case sensitive when it compares to this right here and that right there and so on. So that's fine. So this is first name, this and sign. We're combining that with a space right here. So we have a space between first and last name and another one of these and signs and then last name. So if you want to have a dash or something, you just go like this. But in our case, we just want a space between first and last name. So let's go ahead and run it and we'll get a good result like this. All right, the next command we're going to use is the like command. I use this all the time. It's super useful. So what you can do is essentially look for certain characteristics in a string. So for example, right here, first names that start with a B. So let's go ahead and give it a try. So you want to go right here under criteria and we'll just say like B asterisk and quote. And this does not have to be case sensitive. So you saw the Bo and Bo Jackson was a capital B. So you can see right there, that worked. Now, how about any name that has a B in it? You just do something like this. Okay. Let's give it a run. Okay. So LeBron James there. First name has a B in it. Same for Bo. All right, let's say there's last names that we want to find that end with an S, like LeBron James. So we add the like part here again. And by the way, right here, you can do double quote or single quote. You just have to be consistent on both sides. So in my case, I'll just do double quote there. And I'm going to put a little star here, put an S, and I'm going to end it with a double quote on that side. All right, let's go ahead and view. All right, so we have LeBron James, we have Davis, and we have Bowers right here. So that worked perfectly. There are a few other things you can do with like, but uh, I don't want to get into it too much. I just want to show you my three favorite things with like. The replace function is super useful too. So you can see right here, I had a couple last names with hyphens. And let's say I need to replace that because I can't put that into a database or something. So I have two right there that have that. So what I can do is something like this, new last name. And I'm going to replace any cases where I have a hyphen and I'm going to replace it with, uh, let's say we just want to put an underscore there instead. Okay. End it with the end of the parentheses right there. And we're going to get something like this. Okay. You can see the underscore there. Now let's say we want to uh, replace this value in the last name field. Just write an update query. Just put it right in there like that. Okay. So let's get a look before. And let's run it. After. Sometimes when you're working with string data or text, you're going to get weird things like this, all caps or all lower. And you want it to be like this where it's proper case. So Microsoft Access has a great function called string convert. And what we're going to do here is we're going to fix those that are in all caps or all lower. Okay, so I have string convert, I have first name and you have to put a number. So one, that would be all caps. Two is going to be all lower and three is going to be proper case. And we want proper case. So let's get first name. First of all, let's view it. Okay. So we can see right here, Rex, for example, 
is proper case. Now let's say we want to get the full name in proper case. So we can use that concatenate function from earlier. Go like this. All right, let's paste this back in here, but let's change this to last name. Right? And let's run it. And so we can turn this into that. Sometimes getting the length of certain variables can be a good data quality practice. You can see right here that this is the full text. It's cut off right here at about 50 characters. So this is short text, this is long text, so that's why. Sometimes when you import string data like that, um, this sort of thing can happen. And so it's good to be able to detect it. So you can see here, this is very long. This is cut off at 50 characters as well. So what we can first do is let's create a length variable here. And we'll get the length of comments two, first of all. All right, so we hit run. You can see this is 50, that makes sense, okay? And just so you can sort of see, do comments, just regular comments, and you're gonna get bigger values here. You're gonna get 372 for this one. So something that you might wanna do is, for example, go comments to, uh, say, less than 51. We're creating a variable here that's gonna flag that kind of situation. So we can hit run. And so if you want to just filter this right here, you could just go to back to here and hit true. And now we see that any of these that potentially should be bigger than 50 characters is flagged right here. So we know there's a problem right here and right here. So in this case, all we'd have to do is we'd change comments to, and we'd just go like this. I'm just showing you for demonstration purposes, but you would just change that to long text and then you'd re-import it and then you'd be good. So length is super valuable. I use it all the time for situations like this, just to make sure nothing got cut off. Sometimes you just have to take matters in your own hands and make your own functions. And sometimes that's what I like to do. So I'm gonna show you an example of a function we're gonna make and we're gonna use it in our query. So hit Alt and F11. We're going to make a new module here. All right, and we're going to call this function count words. So as you might have guessed, we're going to count some words here. Okay, this should work. Let's give this a try. I've got some comments right here. And I want to count the number of words in these comments, all right? And so that function that we just made, it's defining a word by a string, space, string, and so on. So let's say we want to do something like this, count. And we want to put in our count words function that we just made. And we're going to do comments field. We do something like that. And so let's run it and see. All right, so we can see one there, we got 14 here. Okay, that worked out great. And these that are null come up as error. You could create some kind of function that makes that zero if you want to. Um, I just wanted to be quick here though. So sometimes you just gotta create your own function and that's what I did there. Anyway, I hope you found this video helpful. I certainly work with text data all the time and I find these essential. So hopefully you find this useful as well. In the meantime, if you could like, subscribe, comment, or just say hello, that'd be great. I appreciate it. In the meantime, have a good one, everyone, and take care.